Hi. Today I'm talking about leak code problem 1276, number of burgers with no waste ingredients. What this problem asks you to do is uh, write a function that will take a number of tomato slices and a number of cheese slices, and it will output a list with two elements, where the first element in the list is the number of jumbo burgers you can make, and the second element in the list is the number of small burgers you can make. Uh, a jumbo burger uses four tomato slices and one cheese. A small burger uses two tomato and one cheese. And there's one more uh, condition, which is that if you can't use all of your ingredients, that is, if you're going to waste some, you should just output an empty list. So if you can use all of them, output a list containing number of jumbo, number of small. Um, otherwise, output an empty list. Uh, the constraints, you can have up to 10 to the 7th tomato slices. Um, I initially tried to solve this problem um, by solving it kind of the way I naturally would. I'd, I'd ask, am I constrained by, when I say naturally would, I mean like how would I solve this problem using my human mind? So I said, am I constrained by tomato slices or am I constrained by cheese? If I'm constrained by cheese, I want to use tomatoes most efficiently, and that's jumbo. Um, if I'm constrained by, uh, yeah, if I'm constrained by tomatoes, I want to use those most efficiently, and that's the small. And so I, I just kind of iteratively, one after the other, picked jumbo small, jumbo small. Am I going to make a jumbo or small based on what I was constrained by? Um, that wound up. Uh, it wound up solving the problem, um, but while I could solve the problem locally, meaning if I ran the code, even with the, um, the worst case scenario of having the max tomatoes and half that uh, of cheese, I could solve it locally, but I couldn't solve it when I submitted it. So testing it locally, it seems to let you run like five to 10 seconds, um, but on the submission, it seems to be less than one second is the requirement for time. Um, so. Yeah, my, my first instinct solution wasn't good enough. Um, it, it was way too slow. And so I wound up having to go to this more analytic solution. Um, and this isn't how I would have thought about it naturally, but just kind of studying the problem and trying to think, how could I go faster? Um, obviously, if you can just solve it with a couple of uh, calculations, that's going to be a lot faster than doing 10 to the seventh um, operations. Um, so, yeah, let me, let me talk to you about how I figured out how to do this. Oops, don't want to do that. Um, what I did is I just set up a couple of equations from the problem statement. So we know that the jumbo burger uses four tomato um, and one cheese. Small uses two tomato and one cheese. It's interesting they both use one cheese. Um, the cheese kind of tells us that's the number of burgers we're going to make. Um, but what I did is I, I just kind of wrote those two requirements out. I said, okay, four times the number of jumbo burgers plus two times the number of small burgers is going to equal the number of tomatoes that I'm going to use. Uh, and likewise, just the number of jumbo burgers plus the number of small burgers, that's going to equal the number of cheese slices that I'll use. So. You know, if you can remember whatever math they teach you, I guess the idea is like system of equations or something, or it's basic algebra. You've got two equations and two variables, and you want to solve them. Well, the way you do that is you write, you rewrite one of the equations um, such that you can you can uh, remove one of the variables. Um, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. And you might say, wait a second, we have four variables: J, S, T, C. Um, but that's only true in the kind of, or kind of algebraic notation we're using right here. When we actually try to solve this, t and c are going to be replaced by uh, actual literal numbers. So we, don't, we won't treat these you know, as if they were variables algebraically. We can treat these uh, just as if they were numbers. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite equation 2 here just to put it in terms of s. So I can say, what is s equal to? Um, and, well, we just subtract a J from both sides, and we say S, the number of small burgers, is equal to the number of cheese slices less the number of jumbo burgers. Um, and so once we've rewritten S like this, 
we can just replace our use of s in the first equation with our reformulation of it. So doing that, we say 4 times j uh, plus 2 times how we wrote s up here is equal to t, the number of tomato slices. We can simplify this by just multiplying the 2 across um, our term. 4j plus 2c less 2j equals t. Uh, the 4j and 2j kind of cancel each other out, so we have 2j plus 2c equals t, or 2j equals t less 2c. Uh, divide 2 onto both sides to get j, the number of jumbo burgers, is equal to uh, I shouldn't do that here because it looks like a division sign, is equal to t less 2 times c over 2. So now we've just, we've written j in terms of something that we can completely solve. Because remember, t and c are both actually numbers um, when, we're, when we're executing this. We're told what t and c are. Or, yeah, we're told the number of tomato and uh, cheese slices. Um, so we can just calculate j exactly. And if you look over here in line 3, that's exactly what I've done. I've just said jumbo, j, is equal to the number of tomato slices less 2 times cheese slices, all that over 2. And I'm using the integer division here. I'll talk about this in a second. It, it, um, it's essentially just a way to turn it into an int. It would be similar to, say, int uh, of all this, um, except... Uh, doing the integer division is slightly faster because um, integer division is a simpler operation than the floating point division um, and it saves us the cast. So integer division is slightly faster. Um, small is obviously the number of cheese slices which is the total number of burgers as I observed earlier. The total number of burgers that we're going to create less the number of jumbo. Um, so now we know what jumbo is and we know what small is um, and so now we're just going to check if it's a valid solution. Like it wouldn't make any sense to have negative jumbo or negative small, um, which is possible just from, from calculating depending on what the values are. So if we come up with, you know, oh, you need to make negative two jumbo burgers in order to make this work, well, then we can just return the empty list. We can say there's no solution if our solution involves doing things like um, making negative amounts of jumbo burgers or small burgers. So here, when I'm returning it, I'm just saying uh, return a list of jumbo first element, small as the second element, if we're meeting kind of these, these um, rational rules that we know about, we know from common sense um, about can you make burgers, like you can't make a negative amount of jumbo or small burgers. Um, and we're going to say, well, we want jumbo plus small to be equal to the number of cheese slices. If solving it involves making more burgers than we're allowed to, uh, that's no good. Um, and we also want them to use only the number of tomato slices. So the reason why this has to be written out here is because you can imagine, um, like the case of 17.4. Uh, if, we, if we were to just plug these numbers in, 17 and 4, um, jumbo would be 17 less uh, 2 times 4 or 8, 17 less 8 would be 9, uh, integer divided by 2 is 4, so we'd say, okay, that's 4 jumbo burgers, um, 17 and 4, so 4 less 4 is 0, so we'd say, okay, we're going to return 4 jumbo burgers, 0 small. Um, but that isn't good because it leaves one tomato slice left over. Um, like essentially the integer division kind of concealed that we didn't evenly divide them. So we didn't say, um, you know, when we said 9 integer divided by 2, that gave us uh, 4. It should be 4.5. So like we're just kind of losing one tomato slice or forgetting about the fact that this didn't evenly divide. And so the way to compensate for that is just to check with, you know, hey, are these exactly equal? Um, and that's why these checks are here. Like, are you exactly um, solving the problem? Um, and yeah, if, if there was any kind of rounding that made it work here, um, it would be caught here. And uh, yeah, if any of those checks um, turn out, uh, meaning you're trying to make a negative amount of burgers or you're trying to, you're ignoring, you know, an odd, <laughs> an odd number of tomato slices or something like that, um, we'll return the empty list. Um, 
And yeah, that is going to solve the problem uh, in terms of test cases that I would use. Obviously, we're going to want to write um, all of the examples they gave us, 16, 7, 17, 4, 4, 17, 0, 0, you know, what about 1, 1? Um, it would be interesting to have like one of each. So what if we had 4, 1 or uh, 2, 1? Um, and then it would be good to just use the worst case. So like 10 to the 7th, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, and you could use half of that. Um, uh, yeah, so those would be good good test cases to run. Um, just to kind of sanity check it here, it is going to work for us. Um, I think this is going to come back very fast. Indeed, it's uh, 96 percentile for speed. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure about how to make this faster. Like, I'd be curious what the <laughs> what the top three percent or what the fastest uh, Python solution is. Um, yeah, but I don't know that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, this is um, solving leak code problem. 1276, number of burgers with no waste of ingredients. Uh, if this is helpful to you, you enjoyed the video, let me know, click the like button, say something in the comments so I know you're watching. Um, I'm going to try to solve about a battle code problem a day, and I'll just walk through it, you know, kind of immediately after solving it. So if you're interested in seeing that, uh, you may want to subscribe. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.